than almost any other terrestrial species. What is it about this no-nonsense creature that gives it lasting power? Skillful hunting? Built-in weaponry? Or are these traits just the beginning? Unique to scorpions are sensory organs called pectines that protrude on either side, underneath the body. They comb the ground, giving the scorpion chemical clues to its environment. The articulated tail and its crowning glory, the stinger. The scorpion is a finely tuned hunter and an unflinching assassin. The venom in its stinger, able to subdue even the most dangerous prey. But getting past its well-earned reputation reveals that the scorpion is an exceptional survivor, even a caring parent, with powers far beyond its notorious sting. For scorpions, survival has always been the primary motivator. 450 million years ago, when plants were first colonizing land, scorpions made their debut. These were giant aquatic creatures, their sprawling bodies supported by the shifting waters of a planet in transition. Within the next hundred million years, scorpions crawled onto land, one of the first aquatic species to become terrestrial. It was a hostile environment. Scorpions not only adapted, they flourished. As the earth cooled, they found niches to exploit. Eons passed, continents shifted. Civilizations rose and fell. In the 21st century, scorpions crawl the earth unscathed. They are living fossils, unaffected and oblivious to change. The scorpion is one of the most reviled creatures on earth, a symbol of death since the earliest of times. For many people, scorpions can trigger a deep-seated primordial fear. Most of the fear centers around the telson, or stinger, that sits at the end of the scorpion tail. This single body part has horrified humans for centuries, and for good reason. The telson delivers the scorpion's venom, capable of killing prey and unlucky predators alike. The venom is a complex cocktail of proteins and neurotoxins specially designed to destroy. Once the stinger punctures the skin, the venom rushes through the circulatory system. For this victim, death comes quickly. The venom of some species is 100,000 times more lethal than cyanide. The base of the stinger contains a pair of glandular sacs that produce and store the venom. The sacs are controlled voluntarily so the scorpion can regulate how much venom is injected with each sting. The stinger itself is a lot like a hypodermic needle. It's hollow and very, very sharp. It's also partly metallic. About one quarter of the stinger is a blend of zinc, manganese, and iron. A pair of openings near the tip of the stinger delivers the venom. Scorpions now radiate across the entire planet on all major land masses except Antarctica. More than 2,000 different species have evolved to accommodate wildly differing habitats. From rainforests to mountaintops to sun-baked deserts, they've got what it takes to survive in the most severe and extreme environments.
scorpions could even feel at home in a post-nuclear wasteland. Radiation, capable of wiping out almost all other life forms, seems to have little effect on them. Wherever they find themselves, they are masters at discovering a way to meet their needs. They are continuing victors in the evolutionary arms race. As their prey has evolved defenses, the scorpion has evolved better weapons of attack. Walking across the sands of southeastern Arizona, the giant desert hairy scorpion. It's the largest scorpion in North America. In this arid environment, the desert hairy searches for its prey, small lizards, crickets, even the tarantula. The local tarantula is a species known as the desert blonde. A tarantula's eyesight is rudimentary, not nearly keen enough to spot the partially concealed scorpion. Gripping the log with its tiny claws, the tarantula manages an escape. It's a warm, windless night, perfect hunting conditions for the desert scorpions. But for this tarantula, it's like navigating a minefield. On a night like this, its only hope is to find refuge in a burrow of its own. The desert hairy tunes into its surroundings, waiting to sense the smallest vibration. A slight motion behind it prompts an attack. Resistance is quashed with a quick injection of venom. The scorpion maneuvers the tarantula to consume it head first. A clue to the scorpion's survival lies in its archaic anatomy. The parts are rudimentary, but remarkably efficient. Ancient fossils show that little has changed for hundreds of millions of years. Although there are slight variations from one species to the next, the basics are always the same. The main body is covered by a hard carapace, or plate, impermeable to water and able to expand across its joints. Claws are used for capturing and crushing prey. These powerful pedipalps combine the sensitivity of antennae with the grasping ability of a pair of pliers. Chelicerae, or jaws, are like tiny pincers used for chewing and consuming prey. Their two center eyes and up to five pairs of lateral eyes provide only rudimentary vision. Throughout human history, 
the scorpion has been feared and reviled. Because they're nocturnal, their habits were always shrouded in mystery, and people assumed the worst. Scorpions were considered agents of the devil, or the underworld. And even today, few people think of scorpions as anything less than terrifying. But the truth about scorpions is only just emerging. It was in the late 1960s that a startling discovery thrust scorpion research on an enormous leap forward. All species of scorpions fluoresce under ultraviolet light. The glow is caused by a substance in the outer layer of the scorpion's body. This glowing layer is so durable that it's often found in scorpion fossils hundreds of millions of years old, and it still fluoresces. No one yet knows the function of this feature, but it's allowing researchers to find and study scorpions as they roam through the dark. Scorpions are evolutionary success stories. What is their secret to survival? Is it their foolproof anatomy? Their ability to adapt? Or is it something else entirely? The answer may lie in the hunt. A scorpion is an unflinching assassin with merciless pincers and a venom-charged stinger. A hungry scorpion is built to kill. Hunting strategies have been honed to perfection. This death stalker is engaged in the hunting method of choice for almost all species of scorpion. Hunkering down in a protected burrow seems an unlikely place for a seasoned killer. But evolution teaches lasting lessons. Hunting for prey can be done just as easily from the safety of your doorstep. This Asian forest scorpion is one of the many species that prefers home delivery. From its bunker, a scorpion can check out the evening's offerings. After dark, a parade of nocturnal creatures erupts onto the desert floor. It could well be the cast from a nightmare. These night crawlers are enticed out by the evening's lower temperatures and cooling desert sands. It's only a matter of time before one will venture across a scorpion's burrow door. With no time to react, this wolf spider is dragged into the scorpion's lair. A feast can take several days and may be enough to sustain a scorpion for months. Although a burrow is preferable, every once in a while, a scorpion may decide to stretch its legs. This giant desert hairy is one of few species known to venture out for food. Like all scorpions, the desert hairy is able to detect prey using the incredibly sensitive hairs on its legs. Even a mealworm's subtle movements create vibrations through the ground. The hairs act like sophisticated sensors picking up the tiny waves. As the grains of sand shift, the waves hit the hairs of each leg at slightly different intervals. This information is processed quickly, telling the scorpion the direction and exact distance of its prey. This mealworm may as well be holding a flashing neon sign. With such a lethal skill set, a scorpion rarely needs to venture 
far from its burrow. Whether it's an ambush or an attack, the hunt is only the beginning. Armed with weapons of destruction, the method scorpions use to kill their prey varies from species to species. Asian forest scorpion moves silently through the humid jungles of Burma. This species is found throughout the tropics of Southeast Asia. It tracks across the damp forest floor, searching for a crevice large enough to fit its menacing frame. for insects and grubs. This small lizard is painfully unaware of the trap that waits before it. Asian forest scorpions rarely use their stinger. Equipped with incredibly strong claws, they prefer to crush their prey to death. The merciless grip folds the gecko into submission damp, dark confines of its burrow, this scorpion will require days to consume its catch. Uniquely designed membranes in the torso expand like an accordion to accommodate the feast. With a large meal like this, the scorpion's body weight can increase by more than one-third. If the pincers of a scorpion are particularly small and narrow, chances are the tail is powerful and packed with venom. For these scorpions, a quick sting may be all that's required to finish off an adversary. The sun drops down over the Kalahari Desert, disappearing before the night's dramas unfold. The burrowing scorpion, native to southern Africa, is on the hunt. The scorpion stands stock still, sensing motion nearby. An unwary cricket walks into ready claws. The scorpion carries its prey like a trophy, moving to a more secluded area for feeding. But its prey isn't willing to go quietly. A matter-of-fact delivery of paralyzing venom ends this cricket's story. The jaws, like miniature claws, are used to masticate its prey. Nothing is wasted. As with all arachnids, digestion begins outside the mouth. Enzyme-rich juices from the gut are secreted onto the food before it's ingested. It's a slow, methodical process of tearing, chewing, and swallowing, and it will last well into the morning. desert in northwestern Mexico is home to this vinegaroon, which looks like a cross between a giant ant and a scorpion. Like most other arachnids, the vinegaroon makes its rounds at night when the desert sands are cooler and many large predators are fast asleep. Unlike scorpions, this creature is not venomous, but its long whip-like tail can still pack a punch. When irritated, a vinegar-like liquid shoots out the end of the tail. It's like built-in pepper spray, always ready for intruders. A carnivore, the vinegar rune hunts down prey in crevices and small burrows. But every so often, it knocks at the wrong door.
a giant desert hairy wastes no time in welcoming this guest in. With its body and tail tightly gripped, the vinegaroon has no means of defense. With little ceremony, the methodical feeding begins. Because they're such successful hunters, scorpions rarely need to practice their art. In any given habitat, only a tiny fraction of the scorpion population feeds on any one night. The remainder are hidden in their burrows, waiting to ambush or just digesting their latest conquest. Scorpions are generally non-social, solitary animals. Most interaction only occurs when young or when they hunt one another as prey. But once in a while, an instinct even greater than hunger overpowers the lives of these invertebrates. Reproduction. It begins with a chemical invitation sent by a female. A male's pectines, that organ unique to scorpions, sweep the ground intermittently, eventually picking up the scent of a female ripe for mating. This message triggers a complex encounter that's been a popular subject of study for biologists around the world. Unlikely lovers, scorpions are unique in their mating techniques. Courtship is a long drawn out affair, a pas de deux that's full of ritual and sexual gymnastics. The details of this dance vary from species to species, but mating can last anywhere from one to 36 hours. This pair of slender brown scorpions demonstrate their variation of the ancient dance. The male sometimes locks and massages the female's jaws with his own. It's a scorpion-style kiss and often serves to subdue the female's natural aggression. A sexual sting can occur in the throes of passion, the male puncturing the female with his tail. It's a dramatic but harmless gesture and scientists still don't understand its purpose. During courtship, both male and female scorpions display a distinctive shaking motion called jittering. This is a sign that mating is in high gear. But there is nothing sentimental about it, for this dance is purely mechanical. The male deposits a bundle of sperm on the ground. The dance, little more than a drawn out tug of war, is actually the male carefully drawing the female towards the bundle. This takes time, patience, and diplomacy. And for good reason up temperature. If it's very cold, the gestation period can double. If she's unable to find food during her pregnancy, she'll reabsorb the embryos to survive. A single pregnant female transported into an unfamiliar habitat can start a whole new colony. Many parts of the world are only home to certain species because of a pregnant scorpion accidentally stowed on a cargo ship. Males are capable of mating more than once in a short period of time. They can produce new sperm bundles in less than a week and start the dance all over again with a different partner. A pregnant female will stay that way anywhere from 3 to 18 months, depending on food supply, and take one by one, fully formed. After birth, they're immediately hoisted onto their mother's back. The number of offspring varies, but it can be anywhere from 1 to over 100. A female scorpion with a large litter can give birth continually for days. This is a scorpion's most vulnerable time. 
If it's separated from its mother at this very early stage, it will become dehydrated and die. Almost 30 babies are supported by this Centroides gracilis. They're sustained by a nutrition-filled liquid secreted from their mother's back. Compared to other arthropods, scorpions invest a remarkable amount of time and energy into their brood. This early period of hand-holding may give the animal the head start it needs to last in the wild. But the free ride lasts only until the first molt, usually within a week or two after birth. If they stay longer than this grace period, they risk being eaten by their own mother. Once the young are independent, they will molt periodically until they reach adulthood. They usually shed their skin five or six times before they reach maturity. But it's a long, treacherous road to adulthood. The hazards of adolescence come in all shapes and sizes. An assassin bug is a predator with the skill of a seasoned hitman. A young scorpion, new to the ways of the world, naively walks into the arms of this killer. With speed and precision, the assassin bug injects its victim with a lethal toxin that rapidly dissolves tissue. The Arizona bark scorpion, found in the southwestern United States, ventures into the desert night. Although it's relatively small, this species is highly toxic. The scorpion wanders at its peril. Its enemies include large spiders, bats, and lizards, all of which are plentiful in the desert environment. This young scorpion will learn that the great outdoors are full of surprises and sticky situations. spider's web draws the Arizona bark scorpion into its weave. A tugging from below alerts the web's mistress to the catch. This unlucky scorpion has found its way into the silky web of a black widow spider, the most venomous spider in North America. Her venom is 15 times more powerful than that of a prairie rattlesnake's. Within minutes, the scorpion is bound in the powerful webbing. Pulling free is more difficult than it looks. This happens to be one of the strongest spider silks in existence. Unlike other webs, the Black Widow's is notoriously erratic and tangled looking, making it difficult to spot. This scorpion has wandered into a death trap. She uses her legs to skillfully knit the scorpion into submission. The oily tips of the Black Widow's feet keep her from getting caught up in her own web. The scorpion kicks the air in a futile attempt to escape. The spider doesn't miss a beat. Movements are stifled as the scorpion is bound on all sides. The spider works with deadly efficiency, suspending her catch in a silky cocoon. She carries her prey away from the ground, clear of other hungry predators. She injects venom and digestive juices into the scorpion. The toxin kills the prey and liquefies its flesh. This meal is prepped, wrapped, and standing by. Scorpions are a shining example of evolutionary success. What has allowed them to survive the test of time? A high rate of procreation? A protective mother? 
or is the key to their survival something completely different? Against this menacing backdrop, scorpions have managed to thrive. In the average desert, there's a scorpion every two square yards or meters. Some deserts support 10 times this amount. Masters of the art of self-preservation, scorpions have developed an ingenious patchwork approach to living in the midst of danger. Laying low is a favorite survival strategy, a deceptively simple means of staying alive. Hiding in a crevice is an easy way of avoiding predators. If a proper burrow isn't available, digging one is always an option. This rototilling fury can excavate soil 400 times its own body weight. A flat rock scorpion can adjust its tail to squeeze into the tiniest of hideaways. Some species of scorpion will spend their entire life in a well-built burrow hoping for dinner to wander by. A burrow is a refuge from the relentless heat of the desert sun. Life a few inches below the ground is a little cooler and a little more humid. On the hottest of days, it can be the only means of staying alive. Of course, other refuge-seeking creatures are thinking the same thing. A vinegar room sprays its trademark vinegar-like mist at a nesting scorpion. The acid is strong enough to temporarily blind its target. Even home base can have its hazards. If a scorpion does decide to venture out, it will usually do so under the cover of night when most predators are asleep. Even the most active species will only spend one in five nights away from the burrow. For the most part, Scorpions are loners, not known for their social skills. And when they're hunting, company is the last thing they need. A spiny mouse scuttles across the grasslands of eastern Tanzania. Gregarious and rarely still, this rodent scours the ground for food. Nearby, a shiny burrowing scorpion is looking for prey of its own. Notoriously curious, the mouse investigates. This species of scorpion has acquired a very direct means of letting a guest know they're not welcome. Enthusiasm unabated, the spiny mouse comes back for a second look. A strong defensive posture and an increasingly agitated hiss drive the point home. Hissers are easily irritated and quick to defend their personal space. It's usually enough to ward off a predator or an over-friendly rodent. No time for self-pity when the stomach is empty. The diet of this mouse varies according to where it lives. But in this bare-bones desert environment, anything edible will suffice. A mealworm's plodding pace is no match for the quick reflexes of its predator. Squirming and struggling only serve to provide the mouse with some sport before dinner. Scorpions may owe their staying power to a forgiving metabolism when food is scarce, a scorpion can enter a state of near hibernation to survive. The metabolic rate of a root vegetable, like a carrot or a beet, is faster than that of a dormant scorpion. At this rate, they can get by on one meal a year 
enabling them to survive in some of nature's most inhospitable environments. When hunting is favorable again, they simply wake up, becoming active predators instantly. A similar survival trick occurs in species that live at high altitudes or northern areas. These scorpions have the ability to withstand sub-zero temperatures without their circulatory fluid becoming solid or crystallized. It's a logic-defying mechanism that allows them to survive in harsh sub-zero temperatures for months at a time. This scorpion was completely frozen less than 12 hours ago. As its environment warms up, the scorpion thaws and simply walks away, undamaged and ready to hunt. And sometimes the easiest meal may be the next of kin. Cannibalism has also evolved as a survival tool. Where prey is few and far between, eating each other is a fine way to tide things over. In some nocturnal species, younger scorpions will deliberately hunt in the day to avoid being hunted down by their more experienced elders at night. The South African fat-tailed scorpion roams the deserts and scrublands of Mozambique and South Africa. It's a large species that stores an ample amount of venom. Gerbils are perfectly adapted for the desert. They retain water well and are excellent diggers. A born investigator, this gerbil is attracted by anything out of the ordinary. A fat tail just might qualify. Otherwise known as the spitter, this scorpion responds to threats by shooting venom from its tail. The spray can reach a victim one meter away. Curiosity hasn't served this gerbil well. The slight bit of spray isn't lethal, but is strong enough to reroute the rodent. When exposed to the unforgiving light of day, scorpions enjoy another basic trait of self-preservation, camouflage. Each species is color-coded to blend into the background of its habitat. The Androctinus australis is found in the desert regions of Africa and Asia. It's a small but powerful species. Its incredibly potent venom makes the Androctinus one of the most lethal scorpions in the world. It shares the arid African savanna with the monitor lizard, a daytime hunter. With long, sharp claws and extremely strong jaws, this is a predator to be reckoned with. The lizard's long, slit tongue, a sophisticated sensory organ, scans the ground for the scent of prey. Vulnerable in the late afternoon light, the Androctinus has ventured a distance from its burrow. It scrambles away, looking for cover. Monitors swallow their prey whole. This lizard will devour anything it's capable of gulping down. The lizard has detected a presence. Now, it's just a matter of stalking the scorpion. The scorpion is deadly, but it can't outmaneuver a predator this large and agile. 
Its only hope is to stop running and hide behind its camouflage. Evolved to perfectly blend into the background, the scorpion is rendered invisible. Only inches away, the lizard still can't make out its prey. But sometimes, even age-old survival methods crumble in the face of the right adversary. A muscular neck and strong jaws destroy all signs of life. The Androctonus is consumed whole, an unceremonious end to the life of a lethal scorpion. But the scorpion leaves a parting gift. The ingested venom courses through the lizard's blood to its nervous system. This reptile is rendered helplessly immobile for more than 12 hours. The slender brown scorpion is a far-reaching species, extending from the Americas to Western Africa. It's a medium-sized scorpion with a preference for the tropics. A red-rumped tarantula picks its way across the moist forest floor. It's a juvenile, too young to anticipate the dangers standing by. The slender pincers of a gracilis get to work, but the tiny pincers have their limit. This scorpion relies on its agile tail to deliver the death blow. The poison quickly takes effect, paralyzing some limbs, inducing small convulsions in others. Before long, the tarantula is dead. Using its versatile claws to position its dinner, the gracilis settles in for a long meal. Venom varies from species to species. One venom may be toxic to insects, another to mammals, another to crustaceans. Depending on habitat and the prey available, each species has evolved its own target-specific, trademark venom to survive. And some species don't rely much on their venom at all. If their venom is weak, a scorpion will often have evolved a thin tail and giant pincers for crushing prey. But small pincers and a thick tail full of venom raise the red flag. In the United States, the most dangerous species is the Arizona bark scorpion. This scorpion roams the arid, temperate areas of the American Southwest. If threatened, it will unleash a series of quick jabs with its tail. The venom is potent, shooting through the body like an electrical current. Of the more than 2,000 species of scorpions, fewer than 25 are lethal to humans. And of this group, only a small percentage of their attacks result in death. But it's a deceiving statistic. Despite the odds, scorpions still manage to kill thousands of human beings every year. The severity of the sting depends on the toxicity of the species and the size of the victim. The first effects of a sting are localized, with intense pain and tingling at the site of the hit.
The more toxic the venom, the more dramatic the effects. The pain radiates into the body. The tongue and throat grow numb and begin to swell. The chest begins to tighten as the body struggles to fight the poison. A highly toxic venom will rip into the central nervous system. It brings convulsions, fever, and the potential of death.